it's nice to finally confirm that crime pays. Well, here's how. Corporations build private prisons to house many of the millions of Americans who are behind bars. Stay with us for a story of profits and prisoners. Now on PBS. On the road. After a decade of judges handing out tougher and longer sentences, America's prison population is going the same direction as the price of food and gas, that is to say, way up. But what may be even more surprising is that government is increasingly outsourcing prisons and prisoners to the private sector. Colorado is at the center of this controversy over incarceration for profit, a practice that's happening all over the country. Senior correspondent Maria Inahosa, along with producers Marianne Vollers and William Campbell, have our report. This is the Crowley Correctional Facility, a nondescript structure sitting in the middle of the Colorado flatlands, just east of Pueblo. From the outside, this medium security prison looks like any other. But there's a huge difference here, one that is yet another sign of the outsourcing of government. Because this prison isn't run by the state, it's run by private industry, a billion dollar company called the Corrections Corporation of America. The notion that a corporation making a profit off this practice is more important to us than public safety or the human rights of prisoners is outrageous. Almost 7% of America's inmates are now housed in private prisons. It's much more here in Colorado, where almost one in four inmates is in a private facility. Colorado's inmate population has exploded. It's six times larger than it was in 1980. As a result, the state forks over almost $95 million a year in taxpayer money to corporate jailers to house its excess prisoners. Across the country, the numbers have been growing faster than the government can build prisons. In fact, the U.S. now has the largest prisoner population in the world, 2.3 million people behind bars, more than Russia, more than China. As the industry grows, so does a backlash from critics who argue that these private prisons are not only morally wrong, but unsafe for both inmates and the people who are paid to guard them. I uh, started in the system as a corrections officer. Donna Como has been here on the front lines of this debate, working for both Colorado state prisons and the Crowley private prison. From my personal experience, state facilities had lower assault rates. Uh, state facilities had lower incidence of staff turnover. Um, State facilities generally have a better level and a better degree of programming and opportunities for rehabilitation for offenders. Are private prisons more violent? There is no standard reporting system to compare violent incidents in private and public prisons. But several years ago, the Justice Department published an astonishing report. There were 49% more staff assaults and 65% more prisoner assaults in private facilities. Is there a difference in safety between working for a state facility or a private facility? When I started brand new in corrections in a state facility, it was a little scary. But after about a month, I finally figured, it, it didn't, didn't take me very long to figure out that no matter where I went, there was somebody watching. Um, there were always eyes. So you didn't have that huge fear. You always have some fear working in that environment, but I didn't have a huge fear. Um, What's going on for you right now? How come you're getting upset? It makes me angry. What does? Um, Tell me. Well, it, in a state facility, you, you don't worry about getting hurt. But in a private, you better worry. You, you better worry. Como was so worried that she reported serious security lapses at Crowley to her superiors. But then she began to worry about her own safety. One day in 2003, she was sent to remove a dangerous prisoner from his cell. And when she called for backup, nobody came to help, she says, leaving her alone and unprotected for half an hour. When I left, I sat 28 minutes with no responders, with a volatile inmate and a new, brand new staff member 
who was scared, so he took off down the tier on me. And Donna Como quit in 2003 and sued the Corrections Corporation, saying she'd suffered retaliation and sex discrimination after reporting security violations. She later settled. But one night in 2004, a major prisoner riot blazed through Crowley. Some of the overwhelmed guards ran away, and outside law enforcement had to put down the uprising. A state report later found that the facility was not fully staffed and didn't follow fundamental security measures. Inmates were angry over bad food and inappropriate use of force. Low pay contributed to a high staff attrition rate. And in an industry where years on the job can literally teach you how to save lives, newly hired, inexperienced staff were left to deal with an explosive mix of inmates from three different states. For two or three hours, the riot went unaddressed uh, by the normal you know, procedures that prison guards are trained to follow when things get out of hand uh, because of um, a private company which didn't know how to do its business. Judy Green is a criminal policy analyst based in New York and an expert on the private prison industry. From your perspective, what is the significance of the riot in Crowley in 2004? The significance is that um, this is an industry now um, a few decades old um, Corporation, uh, the Corrections Corporation of America, the company uh, operating that prison, uh, is the, uh, the oldest and the largest of our private prison companies. Um, and yet the problems that were identified in the wake of that riot are typical of the private prison industry, happen over and over again. 